Hello and welcome everybody. It's a busy day here. I don't know if you can hear my neighbors playing bagpipes and uh, there's lots of activity around the house. So just brace yourself. It might be a very active day. So today we're talking about some custom chips. So for those of you not familiar, maybe we should also do a comparison. And we're just going to talk poker chips. All right. So on the right, we have Atlantic Club, which is a stock design from classic poker chips. On the left, we have the Key West design, which is a proprietary design, which is made and manufactured by classic poker chips, but sold separately. That, that sounds like some sort of commercial, sold se accessory, batteries sold separately. So these are, you know, they're made in the same factory, but they're two different companies. So one obviously is a manufacturer selling stock and the other one is a company selling their own design, which, you know, and I like both designs, both, you know, I really like the Key West to me, is, has been more volatile in my personal preference. Sometimes, I, like when I first saw them, I'm like, yeah, cool. Uh, and then it's kind of like, well, the colors aren't my favorite because they are, they have such a variety of denominations. They made, they used every single color available to them, right? And so that's fine. But then, you know, after a while it grew on me and I liked the different colors because I got sick of seeing the same thing over and over again. And so I'm like, yes, welcome. And I break, and it was like in my top 10 list, I think for one or two years. Then I really liked it and then I kind of fell out of favor with it. Now I'm just kind of like, eh, I feel pretty neutral about them, okay? The Atlantic Club, I've always thought were good chips. I've always liked I've always liked the Atlantic Club. They're really solid. Okay, so we're gonna talk about some things that we're gonna look for in custom chips. But as far as these two, yeah, it's just personal preference. They're so good. Both of them are so good. So before we start, I want to, what are we gonna do here first? Let's play a hand. Should we play a hand? Let's use the key, let's move these up here. Let's put these right here. We're going to use Key West. And thank you, Tommy, for sending out a cut card. I need, it. I need cut cards because I go through them pretty quickly. So this is a Merriam Pro deck, for those of you not familiar. Let's show you. So this is Merriam Pro. It comes in a plastic case, 100% plastic playing cards. And you know, sometimes I just like having different designs. This is called a Weave Shuffle, for those of you not familiar. And for everybody else who might be out there who wants to play along, pause the video, come shuffle up your deck, deal yourself two cards and we'll play. Obviously we're not playing for anything as we could have like exactly this. And it's a YouTube, come on folks, seriously. So anyway, let's get this out of the way and let's see how these chips do. All right, there we go. No, you know what, let's, instead of doing that, let's deal to Jane Doe and myself. All right, here we go. Have a look here. And we have one, two, three, flop. See, I totally forgot to use the cut card. Do you see? Do you see what I did there? So your spotter over there totally knows what's on the bottom now. Way to go. All right, amateur hour here. I tell you, you locked me away for a year and... Who am I kidding? I was never great at this. All right, well, there you have it. I. Almost had nothing. I have nothing, nothing, nothing. Why does she always beat me? I don't know why. I'm not. I'm, if I'm player one, she's player two, and I always, I always lose. I can't seem to manufacture a win. I need to start cold decking, dealing off the bottom, dealing off the bottom. All right. So reasons why I'm having this discussion. I thought I'd bring everybody along for the ride because why not? I'm looking for custom chips. Classic poker chips make, in my opinion, and I think a lot of people's opinion, the best fully custom inlaid chip on the planet, right? Compression molded clay, nobody's gonna, I don't think anybody's gonna argue, these are the best custom chips currently available when you're talking about an awesome custom made chip. Now, for me, the point of discussion is interesting. I'm looking here, I have, here we go. All right, I found, let's grab this rack right here. Okay, so I'm running low. You can see how low I'm running on my promotional chips. Actually, I have like two of these in my golf bag. I think I have one of these in my car and I think I have one of these in the travel case somewhere. So I have maybe five more, but like I'm running out of these John Hobby promotional chips, okay? So I need some more promotional chips. Blue chip through the Paulson factory no longer is offering promotional chips. So I would take that for what it's worth. Oh, look at this. Here are my, so. I'm sure lots of you have had this experience where you have a running blender and you accidentally drop a graded card in there and it blends it up. Either way, that's my other channel. We're gonna put those back and just move along. So I'm, I need more promotional chips and I was thinking, well, if I'm getting more promotional chips, why not get a custom set made? 
And so, you know, I'm looking at different manufacturers and hopefully I can get some classic poker chips as well as some ceramics made. Like I said, I'll bring you along for the ride. It's gonna be a slow process, most likely, for a lot of reasons. But there's some things, particularly with classic poker chips, that are that are interesting. So for starters, look at so I wrote John Hobby on this one. I probably am just gonna stick with this green H. And that gets complicated because speaking with like trademark a trademark lawyer, the questions quickly arise is like, all right, where'd you get that H? You know, oh, it's somebody else's font. Well, what did you do to it? Well, it's green. It's just a green H, basically saying, suggesting that there's, there needs to be more to it than just somebody else's font. If you develop your own font, you make your stylistic art, you make it, you know, yours, and you, there's something interesting and unique about it, that's fine, but you can't just trademark an existing font, H, and just color it green and say, oh, that's... So, that, you know, not recommended that you just use a letter, <laughs> a green letter for a trademark. So, either way, that leads them to some interesting discussions. Could something else be involved with the logo? I don't know, like for a registered trademark, but it's it's it was an interesting discussion, so... I like the green H, though. It seems to tie things back to my website, which is hobbyjohn.com and hobbyphilic and yeah, all my, yeah. So, so we'll see what goes on with that. But either way, so when I'm talking about chips here, I'm not making, like when, when I think of custom chips, like when you go to pokerchipforum.com and you look at people's custom sets, you realize real quick that people are putting their dog's picture on their chips. They're putting the name of the street that they live on or the nickname for their poker room or something that has some personal meaning to them. And I'm not doing that. So my custom chips are very much like a casino chip, right? Like house mold style things. I'm advertising my YouTube channels. So I'm my personal custom chips are not going to feel like personalized custom chips. They're gonna feel maybe more commercial. And, you know, so I might be in a different kind of space than a lot of you, but I want to bring you along for this ride anyway, in case you want to make your own custom chips. You can see the steps that I take and how well that works for me. So just so you know, you're not going to see like, dot, you're not going to see anything super creative. It's going to be very similar to, you know, like Hobby Philic, Hobby John, Hobby Philic at Gmail, you know, YouTube, HobbyJohn.com kind of like commercial stuff, even if I make a custom set. So some things that I'd like to look at. For starters, I like to look at edge spot design. Okay, so this is the what, three one half? So three one two kind of a uh, edge spot pattern right here. Whereas this is like a three and a three one quarter, so three one four or whatever. Edge spots are something that always interest me. Do I want to keep them st stable? Like as you go through all the denominations here on Key West, you can see they all have that three and a hat, 312 style edge spot pattern. Whereas on the Atlantic Club, they progress. So the one is different than the five, is different than the 100. Where's the five? Oh, the 5,000 is, you know, awesome looking. So anybody who's designing or thinking about these custom chips is going to have to address those issues. What kind of progression do you want? Do you want, for example, inlay progressions? Uh, you know, and with what I'm looking for, I'm not sure that's what I want. I'm not sure I could, I might, you, might, you might change my mind on this, but I'm not sure I want edge spot, not edge spot, but inlay progression or even edge spot progression in my set. I might just want something that looks pretty uniform, pretty consistent, very similar to the Key West. So those are kind of some things I want to address. The other thing that I think about, if I'm building a custom set, what do I want my denominations to be? Okay, and what am I going to use them for? And that, well, there are some legality issues that I've discussed with lawyers and I'll talk about that in future videos, I'm sure. Let's not talk about that now, but I love this setup right here. I like it how there's no denominations on here. So you could be you could use these for a tournament, you could use these for a cash game. They're very flexible. I like that. You can use them in Europe. Look, there's no dollar you could for euros or pounds or whatever it may be. But one thing that's always kind of weird to me is this transition right here. The five hundred to the thousand. It's like if I'm making a custom set, I wanna design this problem out because I like the four five X progression, right? So we get a five X progression, five X progression, four X progression, five X progression, and then a four X pro progression here, right? So I want a 2000 instead of a 1000. Well, you have to have a 1000. Why? Because they don't make $2,000 bills. 
please, when was the last time you saw a $1,000 bill? Somebody's going to type in the comment, I own a $1,000 bill. So for me, I think I would go with a 500, 2,000, 10,000 progression rather than a 500, 1,000, 5,000. It seems like there's kind of this like road bump right here. Anyway, that's what I have for you. Those are my thoughts, my first thoughts about designing a chip. So I'm going to bring you guys along. This is the kickoff for my custom chipset, not homemade. Slow down. Stop the... We're not making homemade chips right now, <laughs> the people. Oh my goodness. Custom chips. We're doing some custom chips. So I'm not sure where I'm going to start, but I want to bring you guys along for the ride. And, you know, there's plenty of people who have tons of experience making custom chips. I know, like on Poker Chip Forum, there are people who are on like their fifth or tenth set. They're like, look at my new customs. You can never have too many custom chips, apparently, for some people. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As usual, if you want to support this channel, you can support me on Patreon. I'm accepting general support. I like to put some behind the scenes pictures or videos up there occasionally, but any dollar helps. A dollar a month, greatly appreciated. You can also support me on Amazon by visiting my Amazon shop in the links in the description below. I have some poker and some gaming related things down there. So you should know that I am an Amazon associate. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. I'm looking forward to reading your comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe.